G'day, oh maths lovers, and that probably is all four of you currently watching with the other 44,000 million people, great number there to choose, maths guru, uh, who are an anti watching this because they've got nothing better to do or they're having to. So welcome for whatever reason. If this is the first time you're here on my channel, I am the maths guru, someone slightly bizarre who uses things like um, snippets from It, the movie. Yes, a horror movie, it always fits perfectly into mathematics, to try and get across my point about all sorts of random stuff. Let's see what we can squeeze into this one. Now, again, if you are new, do me a favor. There's a red arrow over there that says click to support. Now, what that actually does is tell me you're watching. Um, creating these videos is a little weird. I sit and talk to myself and I think I'm actually recording it for all about eight people in the world. So if you are watching, do me a favor, click that button. I'm not rich. I'm never going to get rich from this channel. Whoever wants to watch maths videos, I have no idea. Probably just want to shoot myself in the head. But enough of that stuff now. Let's get on to the learning, which is highlighted above. It seems a bit weird that we are here in methods three and four or A-levels, discrete maths or algebra one over in America or I don't know, wherever you are in the world, talking about sums and products of functions. Now, adding things together and multiplying together, not particularly difficult. You've been doing it since prior, ooh, primary school, maybe a little bit later, but not so much functions. This video is going to look at what it means to sum two functions, to find the product of two functions, to sketch them, and know what it means by addition of ordinates. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and say Barry's being added again. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about with Barry, he is a nutter over here who is charged with making maths as difficult as possible. And I am his uh, nemesis, basically. I'm going to try and do what I can to break it down to sort of make it easy. So with that done, we are going to recap for about 30 seconds as well. Why? Well, it's important to know what we've built on. And in previous videos, you've watched them. No. Well, there are about four videos prior to this one that talk about functions and relations and one-to-one -one functions and oh, vertical line tests and horizontal line tests and all sorts of language that hopefully, if you get it right, will set you up for the rest of this course. And this is a bit of a continuation, but now it starts to use some of that language quite excitingly. All right, so do you really need to know what happened before? Yes because we need to know what a function is. But I'll shortcut it now for you. A function is when you draw a vertical line test and it crosses through only once uh, at any point along that function, then it is, or well, that relation, then it is a function. See, I'm already at it. Relations and functions. God, I'm preconditioned to say function for everything. I'm going to stop doing it. Now, adding functions together is actually really, really simple because literally what you're doing is adding y values together for similar x values, or in fact, for the same x values. We just add the y values together, but I don't want to run ahead. Let's imagine I've got uh, two functions. And I'll show you the first one here is the function of the square root of x minus 2. Now, if you're following this on from methods 1 and 2, then the good news is you already know about transformations of, you know about, Oh, you found it difficult. Oh, yeah, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. We're going to go back over it again later on in a few more videos. But basically, long story short, that function there basically tells you to take my standard square root function. And if you understand what the standard square root function, it looks like that. So there is my y and there is my x. And so this there is the square root of x. Now, the good thing to notice about that is there is no values of negative x. And that's because you can't square root. A negative number, yay! I know if you're doing specialist, no, stop it. I know you can. And it's imaginary, but I've got enough issues with imaginary things. I'm not going to go any further forward. But that is the graph of the square root of x. Now, what does this minus 2 do inside the function? Well, it doesn't move it 2 to the left. It moves it 2 to the right, i.e. it translates it. And so there we go, ladies and gentlemen. There is my standard y equals root x moved 2 to the right. Um, and yeah, OK, happy with that. And it will continue. And we have domains and ranges and what have you. Um, come to that in just a moment. I want to now look at a second function, because these are the two functions I'm going to use through the whole of my video. And this one here is the square root. So we're going to call it g of x. We can't call it f of x, because we've already defined f of x as something else a little bit further forward. So I'm going to define it as the square root of 4 minus x. Now, do you notice that there? Absolutely. Now, I'm going to scroll for just a second and come back up to that, because my favorite thing about maths, and this is why I'm trying to work against Barry, hashtag no more Barry, is because maths is a huge trick. It's all smoke and mirrors. Literally, there is a dude sitting in a room trying to make this hard. Well, I don't think maths is particularly difficult. I struggled at it at math because of this guy. Now, in the UK, from what I understand, we took him outside and shot him. 
twice because you tried to get away. And things have become simpler. We try and get rid of all that rubbish. But over here in Australia and undoubtedly in the rest of the world, life becomes more complicated. I don't know why. Barry's got brothers. He's like the ghost of Christmas past. Anyway, so one of the points here is that we need to be very careful when we have these functions to make sure we understand what it is they're trying to show us. And again, believe it or not, this here is based on my base graph, and I always call it uh, the base graph as a square root of x. But what you'll notice is that it's actually a negative of x. They're trying to trick us in. Now, when we have a negative x inside the function, it flips it that way. So actually, that negative sign, uh, he says, drawing his axes completely the same way, let's try and draw them the other way, would actually reflect my graph in the y-axis. So there's my y. So actually, that's the graph of minus the root of x. Now again, there are people out there screaming, you can't do that, you can't do that, you can't have a minus nine, under, you can't have a minus sign under the axes. Whoa, whoa, chill. <laughs> All right, we'll come back to that a bit later on. Now, lots of people think, oh, I know what to do now. Uh, that becomes the square root of minus x. I'm gonna put a plus four there, and that means we move it four to the, yeah, not the positive, to the negative. But what you notice from my graph is that's not actually what happens. And the reason being is actually, and this is where life gets really, 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 really confusing, is that this x here, when we're looking at dilations, reflections, and translations, actually has to be positive inside my brackets. So what I'm going to do is if I actually make that negative of x minus 4, that's exactly the same. And what that means is that when I look at this now, as much as it looks confusing, that is a reflection in the y-axis, and then I have to move it four to the right. And when we look at this on this graph, that's exactly what we get. Now, don't worry about it if you don't fully understand that. There are so many more videos coming later on in this course with regards to translations, and there is a huge trick to it. But my advice to you is get to know what all of these graphs look like. But anyway, that is my second graph. And what's that got to do with the price of fish? Absolutely nothing. But what I'm now going to do is I'm going to put them on the same graph. Why? Because we're going to add these ordinates together. Now again, Barry, ordinates, I, it, whatever. It's just a coordinate, Y values. But anyway, we're going to add them together. And so zooming in a little bit, there we go. Those are my two graphs. You can see here the 4 minus X, and I can see here with X minus 2. And there is a very distinct overlap, and there is a very distinct point of intersection. And to make things a bit easier for me, I've actually zoomed it in again. Now it would appear, and we have to be careful here, that this graph, this 4 minus x, does not exist anywhere to the right of that 4. And likewise, this graph of root of x minus 2 does not appear anywhere to the left of that 2. And that's going to become quite important. Now, adding these two together tends to cause great confusion with people. And I just say to you, what you are doing is for every x value, you are adding together the two y coordinates of each function. That's what you're doing. You're adding together the two y coordinates. Now, here I've got the final uh, graph for you, but I just want to explain where it came from. So if we look at an x value of 2, we'll notice the y value is equal to 0 for the blue graph. And the y value here for my red graph is about 1.4. So when I add 0 and 1.4, what do I get? I get 1.4. And that's why that graph has that first point sitting on the red line. Now, we like anywhere on graphs that it's equal to 0. And I'll tell you why in a moment. If we look at this point here, 3. So when my x value is 3, for my red graph, my y value is 1. For my blue graph, my y value is 1. And hopefully everyone in here knows that when I do 1 plus 1, I'm going to get 2. And lo and behold, if I look at my y value, it works out to be 2. So now I've got two values, two beautiful points on this axis. And again, I'm going to look here. When x equals 4, what do I get? Well, I've got my red value is 0. And my blue value is about 1.4. And when I add those together, I get 1.4. And so I've now got three points on my graph. Now, how do I find the rest of the points on my graph? Well, you work your way along until you get a general idea of what's happening. So I'm going to look at this 2.5 here. And I'm just going to say to myself, I add on those sections, as I just said. So I've got this 
vertical value. This my y value here is about 0.7. So I'm going to start on my red graph and I'm going to go up about 0.7 and I'm going to do a little kissy kissy. And that's across. Likewise at 3.5. I'm going to go and I'm going to add on about 0.7. And then again, I'm going to go to here and notice that's about 0.4. And I'm going to go to a similar point on here and add on 0.4 and do kisses. Now, the great thing about this is you don't have to be beautifully accurate. You're looking at a general idea. And by the point of doing those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I've got an idea of I could draw a beautiful smooth curve. Now, Going back to what I said a moment ago, what did we notice about the blue curve? It was not defined on the left-hand side. And what did I notice about my red curve? It wasn't defined on my right-hand side. And so, because it's not defined, we notice that actually my function, my addition, when I've taken this f plus g of x, and I'll explain that in a moment, only exists in that very, very small part where the both graphs overlap. And again, I've zoomed in here which is full on massive, just to show those dotted black lines show that this thing only exists between x equals two and x equals four because the graphs, otherwise those red and blue graphs do not exist outside the values of two and four together. Now, as I say, notation is really, really important and Barry was on a roll with this one. So what we need to realize is that when we have in brackets f plus g and x outside, all that is trying to tell us to do is take two functions and add them together. And as we've just done there, it's the same as adding the y value of the f, of the f um, function and the y value of the g function. That's all it is. We might see something like this. Find f plus g of 3. Well, we should be fairly happy that f of 3 just means take the f function and put 3 in its place. Well, as I say here, that's nothing more than put 3 into the f function. 3 into the g function, work out what each of those values are and add them together. Now, the most important part of this video is actually that when we are doing the domain of a function f plus the function g, it is only defined where both of those functions overlap. And that's all that means, that dom f, mm, dom g, that mm, just means intersected. Comes back to a bit of a probability and a previous video. All right, so... Very happy to once again go back to this graph here and say, well, there was my overlap. And my function, my f plus g of x, was only defined when those two actually overlapped. Otherwise, it was not defined. Now, ladies and gentlemen, once again, we are now going to move on to subtracting ordinates. Do you think it's going to be any different? No, nah, not at all. All we need to do when we're subtracting ordinates is to make sure that we know, are we doing f of x minus g of x or are we doing g of x minus f of x? Because obviously they will be different. So in this situation, I'm pretty confident we're doing f of x minus g of x. Okay, so those were my two functions, once again, overlapping. And here we are confirming we're doing f minus g. So in this situation, we're always doing the red minus blue. And I'm actually going to write that on here, red minus blue. What are we minusing? Well, for every x value, we're looking at the two y values and taking them away from each other and plotting a new point. And as we can see, that green value is pretty funky. Do you notice, once again, it is only defined between 2 and 4, because that's where both the graphs actually exist. Outside of that, one of those graphs doesn't exist. And if it doesn't exist, you can't add a value and an undefined. We go back to uh, infinity, and that makes no sense to me whatsoever, because you can't add anything to infinity. Love you, love you more, love you to the world and back, love you to infinity, love you to infinity plus one. No, you don't. It doesn't exist. Stop it. It's stupid. Rant over. So let's have a look. In this situation, we're doing red minus blue. So here is my red value, my f there, my y value is zero. Here, my blue value is 1.4 approximately. And so when I do 0 minus 1.4, it is no real surprise then that that value there is negative 1.4. And again, so many of my groups, when I've taught them this, look at me as if this was voodoo, all right? Oh, I've got an overwhelming need to put something from Princess and the Frog playing behind me. Oh my God, Disney, love it. Everything you do, Disney, can fit into maths. Oh, voodoo, voodoo, voodoo. Anyway, um, if you haven't seen the movie, it's a great movie. Back, 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 back. Bring it back to maths. 
Uh, right, let me go back again. So we've got the red minus the blue. Now, actually, addition of ordinance or subtraction of ordinance or any of this is awesome where these things overlap because it makes it really easy to find one of the points. And what we notice is that an x value of 3 has a y value for both of them of 1. So when I do 1 minus 1, what do I get? I get 0. And ladies and gentlemen, there we go again. And once again, we have this point here where if we do red minus blue, well, the red value is about 1.4. The blue value is 0. Take them away and it ends up on the curve. And I would continue just choosing a few examples just by looking at the differences. It doesn't have to be beautifully exact, but it does have to fall between 2 and 4. This stuff is amazing. Yes, I go on to think of this as something else. That was something I talked to my group, and I have to say, it confused them even more. So if it's all the same with you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to skip that. Now, domains, domains, and more domains. Please, please, please notice that the domains of these functions are only... Um, valid for where they overlap. So you have to know what these functions look like to be able to work them out. Now, multiplying functions, does it get any more interesting than multiplying functions? No, not at all. Multiplying functions is exactly the same as we've done before. I mean, literally the same as we've done before. Uh, I'll run through the example. Let's just zoom in. All right, so zooming in. What do we notice? Well, we're going to do f uh, dot g of x. That just means f times g of x. Now, that's not to be confused with the video I'm about to record where you have fog in it. Yes, that's a whole new horror story. Moving on. That's not f of g. It's f dot g of x, which is just the same of f of x times the g of x. So in the same way, for every single value of x, what I'm going to do is look at my two y values for each of my functions and multiply them together. So let me see. What do we have here? Well, for my blue function, it was 0. And my red function, I don't really care. Because what is 0 times anything? It's 0. Absolutely. And once again, my red function there. I think I might have said wrong red function before. If I did, I meant blue function. A little bit colorblind today. Now we're going back to my red function. What is the value there? My y value is 0. Multiply them together. What are you going to get? You're going to get 0. So that is why my green function starts and ends at 0 in this situation. Another awesome value to choose is, again, when I say where they overlap. What do we notice? Well, they overlap at the point 1. Yes, just to go back. See here? They're overlapping at the point 1. So my red value and my blue value are 1. And what is 1 times 1? It is 1. Yes, very good. So there we go. I've done my cross. And again, no difference. I take each of these values. Now, probably with this, you need a calculator. Yes? And because this is a CAS course over here in Australia, and I'm sure in lots of different places they let you use CASs as well, trying to work out each of these values should be trivial. But my advice is for each of those, you need to add on, uh, sorry, you need to do about five or six points to know the general form. In this situation, it was a curve. If we scroll back uh, before, this one here was more sort of like an S shape, more like an X cubed, and that wasn't in the right direction for you. Forgot to reverse it. Yes, previously, what was it uh, before that? It was a, yep, again, it was a curve, but it was above. It would sort of joined on my uh, two graphs rather than just now on zero, zero. Now, the good news is for ladies and gentlemen, and for those of you who's watching, I is almost done because actually, that's actually about it. I'm going to do a quick 45 second recap. So we dealt with sums and products of functions. We looked at summing two functions was nothing more than taking like x values, finding the y values and adding them together. We got some pretty funky graphs. So when we added a square root of x minus 2 and root 4 plus uh, minus x, we got a funky graph that was only actually defined between where those two functions overlapped. And that probably was the most important part of this whole lesson. Then we looked at subtracting ordinates, which funnily enough was the same as adding ordinates. But once again, we said we need to be careful that the domain was only valid for those two points. And because I wanted to ramp up the pressure, we looked at multiplying the functions and actually it was all the same. <sighs> Breathe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. I am done for this particular lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Have you already subscribed? No? Well, you're going to be able to do that in just a moment. But if you have, that's just great. Can you do me a favor? Actually, get the word out there on Instagram and hashtag MathsGuru or spread around the word of my channel because it would be greatly appreciated uh, to know that people are watching. Otherwise, there we go. I promised you that that little doohickey would show up. There is a subscribe button. Please click it. Please click it even. 
Wow, speaking very fast today. Otherwise, there is a video loading for you over there that will hopefully be of the similar type of nature. It has been good having you watch. I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Mass Guru, out.